Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast. And I am here in Clearwater, Florida at the ASCII Edge event. And I have a new emerging vendor to the podcast. Jackie from CyberFox is here in the house. Jackie, how are you? I am doing great. Thank you, Uncle Marv. I'm flattered and honored to be a part. Okay, now you need to stop that there. (laughs) Do I? (laughs) So uh, let's let everybody know that we are here live. We're on Media Row right outside the... uh, the <laughs> the presentation hall. Oh yeah, and they're setting up booths right next to us, so it Unedited. might get a little, might get a little loud here. But uh, CyberFox, now I will basically let everybody know I am in a trial with you guys. Yes, you are. Uh, and let's tell everybody what is CyberFox. So CyberFox is password management as well as privilege access management. Um, so it's two different solutions. So one being our password manager. Password boss, and then our privilege access management tool um, is actually called Auto Elevate. And that is the Auto Elevate that people know from years ago. Yes. Just recently acquired by CyberFox, right? Correct. So we actually started off as Password Boss, and then we acquired Auto Elevate September of 2021. So it's a little confusing for people. Are you guys Password Boss, Auto Elevate? Um, now we're under one roof, CyberFox. Um, which we actually celebrated our one-year anniversary at um, IT Nation Secure. Uh, so under one roof now, yes. One roof. Now, now I don't know if you know answers to the questions I'm going to ask. So we'll the see. first question I'm going to ask is, why the name CyberFox? Yeah, so it's actually funny. We did a whole vote company-wide, and we probably came up with like 50 different names. And it's always hard to buy a domain like make sure people know how to spell it right it's right. easy and simple and they're not mispronouncing it when you're cold calling them <laughs> okay. for our bdms um so cyber security cyber and i think a lot of msps i guess resonate with you know a good logo that's memorable animals so a fox being one it's kind of sly you know under the radar they're quick so to get away from the bad actors out there, and then boom, CyberFox, there you have it. All right. So this sounds like you were part of the uh, group that recommended this name, or did I they did. just train everybody up on it? No. So it was down to three. Uh, something. I think there was like a dog. Something <laughs> with a dog, but I didn't like it. So I actually did vote for CyberFox. Okay. And we've been great, getting great feedback from MSPs. They're loving the logo. Um, and also the mascot they're putting on the fox. Yep. It's seen everywhere now. So, yeah, I did vote for CyberFox. Okay. <laughs> and I will say the fox logo has been around. Now, I, I'm hoping you guys do more with your swag because it. I know. I mean, You're disappointed of with the swag. The stickers. You had a hat. I didn't, yes. I didn't. Do you have the hat today? So we have the hats. We have our swag. We're holding out for um, the full event tomorrow. Okay. okay, Marvin. So you'll get your CyberFox swag for sure. So I think I, the I problem, to... you came late. So people try to get the swag. No, 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 no. I do my swag run <laughs> early. Dude. I get in right at the beginning. It's the first thing I do while other people are trying to get food and talk to vendors. You, you okay. remember, I'm the one that flies by, I grab a swag and move on. Okay. I don't want to be scanned. Yeah, no scanning, of course. <laughs> now, are you the one that comes with the swag bag? Yes. That is hilarious. Yeah, the first thing, so, you know, the, the secret to the swag thing is you've got to go identify where the bags are first. Okay, yes, that's and, key. And, you know, sometimes you have to grab multiple bags. <laughs> right. So I go grab the bags. That way I can do the swag run all in at one time and not have Hit to, like, all. bail, dump off stuff, yes. that sort of thing. That is hilarious. Okay. So now that makes me a little worried because I would do my swag run today, which is oh. the first day that the vendor hall is open. So if you're saying you're holding out until later, <laughs> that means i got to do a second swag run. You do. So yeah. come by our booth. I will hold some swag for you. Okay. We got socks. That's a hit. We got okay. the hats and the mugs now. All right. Do you have... What about the T-shirts? I haven't seen t-shirt, the T-shirts. We have the T-shirts. Okay. So I'll hold some swag back right. for Marvin. So 
Let's move on and talk about the company now. <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> so, so <laughs> it's, it's, the it's, it's a great time. I mean, uh, so I saw you guys at Exchange. Yes. And you're here at ASCII in Clearwater. Part of that reason is you're located here in Tampa, right? We are, yes. So we're actually, funny enough, we're sitting in the old ConnectWise building. Um, so our CEO and founder is David Bellini, who actually started ConnectWise back in the day with his brother Arnie. Uh, so they still have their MSP 41 years strong today down the hall from where we sit. So we're local, so it makes it really easy to come down here to St. Pete. Um, and we love, of course, going to events and meeting our partners and different MSPs in person. All right. Now, tell me about your journey, because obviously yes. you can't come up here and say you've been with CyberFox for five, ten years. So where was yes. your journey in tech? My journey, um, so I graduated from college, let's start with that, from Florida <laughs> State, uh, 2019, go yeah, go Knowles, uh, Florida girl, and... Hey, you didn't have to say the year, just so you okay. know, but now, okay. that, now that we now know. Now we know how old I am, <laughs> yes. Um, so then I got into recruiting, so I was actually in IT recruiting, so I knew, like, surface level what an MSP was, uh, but not really, like you know, the grit, like deep, what they do on a day to day okay. and how challenging the job is. Uh, so I did that for about a year. Um, and then I call it my COVID gig. Uh, I was actually cold calling for a uh, marketing and sales company actually in St. Pete, um, where they would outsource, you know, cold callers. So it was actually fleet management, uh, for T-Mobile for business. Okay. Um, and then, um, Anthony Bellini, David's son, actually reached out to me on LinkedIn, and I just had a really good feeling. And it's funny, I never checked my LinkedIn messages, but I was like, hmm, I'll see what this opportunity is, you know. Um, and he called me that day, um, and then Adam Slutskin, our CRO and co-founder, yep. called me hours after that. They are moving quick. Uh, they were looking for someone that had experience cold calling um, and just being able to... I don't know, really push out those numbers and not really be afraid of a challenge. Right. Um, so that's how I started. I started in 2020 of October. It was just password boss. I remember the first day, like it was yesterday. Um, it was a very small office, probably the size of a walk-in closet, no windows. And I just remember this is going to be really good or really interesting. And here you are three years later. Yeah. Now, let me ask, had you actually gotten the time to develop your chops with the cold calls because it sounds like not only did they find you on LinkedIn but there must have been something that stood out so were you killing it at the cold salt at the cold calling game I was killing it and I think it really was my drive and then having a why like a goal because I didn't want to cold call forever right, right. I don't think anyone nobody, does. Nobody does yeah so I was like I want to be a regional sales manager right like I want to close the business I don't want a cold call I want people to actually you know want to talk to me so I was like I just got to put in the work and I was kind of I want to say like a psycho like I never really took a lunch and I don't think that's a good thing but I was just busting that's out the not calls. legal you have to take I lunch. know I know <laughs> I did maybe like a quick 30 I don't know, but I was just like so determined to get meetings set, right? Um, and I think what really helped me was they brought on um, a, now is a life coach, but a former ConnectWise employee uh, to talk to us and just tell her, us about her experience. So I actually hired her as my life coach. Right. Um, so she's been working with MSPs for obviously like 10 plus years. Um, so she's really helped me really with my management. And I think that's almost half the battle. Like sales, she says it's drama and math, right? right? Yeah. It's just having thoughts that serve you and constantly educating yourself. Because if you come in like from eight to five, right, doing the bare minimum, you're just going to stay there. So I think spending time outside of work, understanding the industry, understanding the challenges that an MSV has, which you guys have an extremely hard job, um, and then being empathetic and really serving them, not selling them. Mm. Okay, you just went through a whole yeah, bunch I of think stuff that was a here. Lot. Hey, this, this is like full <laughs> podcast material yeah, here because you actually just mentioned we just had the session on uh, quiet quitting. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was so a good one. So you're not uh, somebody who is... 
quiet. You know, just doing the minimum. Well, you're not yes. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the minimum. But I can see how that would happen. Yeah. And I will say, like, when you ask people that, no one wants to say, yeah, we deal with quite quitting, right? But I talk to MSVs all day, every day. I would say on average, you know, all the calls that I have, I probably hear it three times a week where they lost a technician or yeah. something happened, right? It is amazing that people don't want to talk about it, but yet we know it's happening. Yeah, we know. It's kind of like a lot of other things. We know pe we know that our clients are being compromised, but nobody wants to exactly. admit to it. Exactly. Yeah, no one wants to say, oh, yeah, my client suffered from a breach, right? Right. Yeah, so, and then the remote work, they can just hide behind the screen. Yeah. You have no clue what's going on. Absolutely. All right. This so is awesome. Look at that. You didn't think you had anything to say. I know. Look at me. All right. We just got to get this past corporate to make sure it gets published. So. I know. I got to get approval, Marvin. <laughs> Uncle right. Marv, we're going live. We are live. So, Jackie Hanlon from Cyber Fox here in Tampa, Florida. Yes. Good job. Thank you. All right, folks, that's going to do it. We'll be back with another interview from Media Row here at ASCII Edge in Tampa, Florida. See you soon. Holla.